Hello there, I'm Alger Hill, and welcome back to some Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiserreich. In our last Kaiserreich series, as Austria, it's broken! Yay! The safe corrupted, and I only got like three or four episodes in, and it's broken. I was really, really enjoying myself, but it died, and uh, none of the guys can help me. Uh, saves just corrupt. This is the problem when playing with mods. These things happen. This is why you make backups. So, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be playing another Kaiserreich series as the Ottomans. As the Ottomans, I'm going to be playing a very interesting game, because there's some really cool history stuff that goes on. I played a little bit of this on my stream at twitch.tv slash Alderhill, but I really wanted to show you guys it on YouTube, because it's really, really interesting and a really fun way of playing. So basically, in the, uh, the Ottomans had a bit of a bad time. They were actually on Germany's side in World War One, and they were very close to economic collapse, but the only reason they survived is because Germany saved them. However, their economy still crumbled in, like, the 20s, so that's essentially what happened is they got a bunch of debts with the rest of Europe, and they are now paying off those debts. So they're currently in massive decline. So we're going to go regular, going to stay off Iron Man mode, keep the circle focuses off. Of course, of course, Ottoman Empire. Let's do it. So, basically, have a little drink. Basically, the Ottomans have a very interesting thing called the OPDA. And the OPDA is essentially the Ottoman Public Debt Administration. Basically, Europe was like, why aren't you paying your debts, yo? Get it together. You know what? No. Screw you, Ottomans. Screw you, you crazy Turks. We are going to organize our own thing and make you pay them. So now other people nick all our factories. 30% consumer goods factories, and we have to pay them our debts. We also have Ottoman power de uh, decline. Basically, ineffective administration. We're the sick man of Europe. It's pretty sad. So we're in a bad situation. There's also a lot of revolts that fire very early. Uh, there's a Kurdish revolt in Kirkuk or something like that. That is actually quite easy to put down, but there are a lot of problems. And there is another time wherein uh, Bulgaria fights against Serbia, as well as Greece and Romania. And we have a little choice of what to do with that. So, it's a tricky situation, like how to deal with this. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. First of all, let's pick our first national focuses. So they have a really cool focus tree that I think is very diverse and interesting. Uh, first of all, they can go matters of the state to get political power, and you can go down the route of basically trying to get rid of the bullshit of the Ottoman decline. Because when you look at the Ottoman decline malice, it's 20% power gain, 5% unity loss, 2% organization, 10% production efficiency, and 10% research. That's fucking bad. The ways to get through is to go through political interests, and you can either dissolve the parliament, or you can support the parliament. If you dissolve parliament, um, they get a little pissed off a little bit. Uh, opposition will be silenced for the benefit of the states. I think there's some bad protests that happen, some not so great things that happen. Uh, so we have to get basically get rid of corruption. Requires one of these two. So we can go uh, support the parliament and then write new constitution. Now, if we want to just go dissolve parliament, what do we need? Can we just do that whenever? So we actually it needs to be after 38 before we can get the sultan speech anyway. And if we want to go enforce the rule of law. And get some nice bonuses, um, like for example, solid constitution, which grants consumer goods reductions and power and power protection, power protection, uh, power gain. And then we can enforce, eliminate military factions and basically get rid of the decline. But to do that, we have to go down bureaucratic reforms and judicial reforms, which I think is what we're going to do. Basically, get, it gets you a lot of political power and ho also just makes things a little bit less terrible. And also, you get a research slot over here, a two research slots actually, but we need to get rid of the OPDA before we can get that one. Uh, foreign affairs, uh, we get political power, we can retake Yemen, if we are a neighbor of Yemen. We can go Turkic diplomacy, which is, at, I believe, not... Oh! Oh, they must, have, uh, they must have changed this! Oh, no, this bit, yeah. This, these paths are not implemented yet, but Turkic diplomacy is. Yeah, they actually have yet to implement that. We have the Ottoman Caliph, and then the OPDA negotiations, and basically make the OPDA go away. However, if we are at war with one of those... Um, so we have to be one of the, oh, the Austrian Empire has to be at war with one of these nations. And then we can basically be like, hey, let us, let us leave us alone, which is nice. Economic initiatives is pretty cool. Once we get to the OPDA, we can start going down this route, which gives us a lot of really nice bonuses. Once we've done this, we can really start to become, once we're able to get here, we start becoming an economic powerhouse because of the steel gain and factory gain. Look at the oil and steel we get. It's really, really nice. Uh, and the Ottoman army gives us some research, uh, some sort of land doctrine and unity bonuses, which is really nice. Some military factories, some actually really decent stuff, as well as this, which gets us infantry equipment production cost reduction. Um, there's a lot of really good stuff here. This one is actually very important to get. If you do not get this, you get some very bad things. To reorganize army structure, you actually get 3% recruitable pop, which is fucking amazing. 
Then you can reform the gendarme and also form desert forces. And these patrol the waste. These actually stop um, people attack, people, like rebels rising up in, in, in uh, throughout our country. Yeah, we have to get the gendarme corps. Uh, the problem is we need to get... Actually, we can get that pretty early. So, I mean, the route I want to go is probably... Because we don't... We can't actually do this till 38. So, I might go matters of the state now to get that political power. And then go foreign affairs and get the Ottoman Caliph. And then just start heading down the route of the gendarmes so I don't have to deal with the rebels. So, let's do that. Uh, we'll go our standard research route of uh, getting those sexy bonuses. Oh, yes. Civilian factory wise, I'm going to build just a couple civilian factories. 40%, uh, 50%. Where's the best place to build my factories? Music's a touch loud for me. I like tastes. We'll build some civilian factories in. Oh my god. Look at that. Two factories. What is this? Oh my god. Ah, uh, Jesus. Okay, and the uh, two types of. And the only real thing we have is just a basic infantry division. So we'll just kind of maddening, like just massively recruit that as best we can. Surprisingly, we actually have a decent amount of equipment, but we'll keep building a lot there. I'm not gonna build tanks or crappy fighters, but I will get some support equipment so we can get some defensive stuff. Oh my god, maybe I won't. Jesus. Oh god, that hurts. Look at that. So we still need steel. Oh my god, we'll get some steel. Although we do actually have, we actually do have some puppets of Albania, Armenia, and Tripletania. So if we have steel, does Albania have any steel that we could get? Let me just go through the list. Albania, maybe, maybe. They do not. That's okay. Um, and other than that, we're just basically gonna look pretty. The first part of the game is quite uh, slow paced. But that's okay. Also, we have some dockyards free, and we have steel, so we might as well build some submarines. There you go. So, to Russia with love, thank you, Kreiserreich team, great job, and I want to see everything. Cool. And then we're going to get our first historical event. So, the Sublime State. So, what's the greatest empire in existence, spanning three continents and ruling over millions of people? The Ottoman Empire has declined by the late 19th century, to the point of being known as the sick man of Europe. An inability to industrialize, the non-existence of an educated middle class, and a chronic lack of funds meant that the Ottoman state had dropped back well behind the European powers by 1876, when Abu Dhabi II took the throne. At the time, the Ottoman army was still reeling from the shock of the Russo-Turkish War, and that's 1877, and the Ottoman treasury just declared bankruptcy, and several interest groups were scheming to obtain political control of the empire. These weaknesses led the empire to seek closer cooperation with European powers. Prussian military success against France led the empire to form military and economic ties with the Germans, culminating in the construction of the Berlin-Baghdad Railway in 1888. During his reign, he launched a massive education reforms or programs and made desperate diplomatic maneuvers to keep his empire intact. While at the same time, he engaged in diplomatic repression of opposition groups in an effort to maintain his absolute rule. Despite these efforts, a revolt of the Young Turks in 1908, which is where that website gets its name from, the Young Turks, it's like a revolutionary thing, the subsequent dethronement of 1909 and the bloody coup of 1913, in the days leading to the Vatican League, the Ottoman Empire was ruled by a triumphant of the three pashas in Virtalat and Kemal. In 1914, as the Welk League began in Europe, the young Turk government signed a treaty, secret treaty with the Germans and soon after joined the war against the Entente powers. Status quo antebellum. Uh, after narrowly escaping defeat in the destruction of the Velkili, I'm going to open my door because it's very, very warm in here, the Ottomans found that they had lost much for a little gain. Starting through 12 years of war, disease, and poverty, the Ottoman Empire gained nothing to show for it. Following the gloomy conclusion of the disastrous war, Enver Talat and Simo Peshis attempted to reinforce their authority, but the Committee of Union and Progress Government had lost all credibility by them. Added to this was the immense pressure from the various groups to prosecute the young Turks responsible for dragging the empire into war. This quickly led to downfall of the Triumvite, who escaped abroad. With German support for the Ottoman Sultan, Sultan had regained a semblance of authority, albeit weak. Unfortunately, the Germans had an interest in maintaining the status quo, and so consistently backed the monarchy in any clashes of opposition groups, while at the same time letting Sultan Mehmed VI know that non-compliance on his part would lead to withdrawal of their support. In 36, then, the Emperor is staggering and slippering. More and more groups demand reforms are appearing, and to be joined by various nationalist groups intent on achieving independence. Economically, too, it is reliant on German support, especially the oil trade for the Middle East. In other words, the Ottoman Empire is now the terminally ill man of Europe. Basically, in the real world, what happened is that uh, the Ottomans were in a massive economic and political and social decline. And by the time of World War I and the invasion of Turkey uh, in like the Gallipoli invasions, which actually failed by Britain, uh, obviously Turkey lost World War I along with Germany. What ended up happening is the Ottoman Empire was dissolved and destroyed in 1917, or 1919 rather. 
uh, leaving, creating, creating the formation of a democratic uh, Turkish state, um, Islamic Turkish state, which was just Turkey, uh, and obviously Constantinople, or rather Istanbul, which is what it was called, uh, and also the release of many individual powers, which led to the huge Middle Eastern crisis we have now, leading to the liberation of Iran from Persia, leading to of Iraq, of uh, Saudi Arabia from Hashem Arabia, and obviously uh, all these badges, like, you know, the Freaking Lebanon, Syria, all the other states, Palestine and Jerusalem and all that in Israel. But now in the Kaiserreich, uh, the Ottomans were propped up. The German Empire kept propping them up and keeping them alive well past the point of their, you know, inevitable dissolvement. So we're going to see what happens in this lovely series, guys. Uh, I may try and continue the Kaiserreich Austria series. In fact, by the time this comes up, it may have already started. We're continuing. I might try and reload a previous save and see if we can make it go. Make it, make it go. Assassination of President Gorinsky. Gorinsky has been shot and killed while away to the Senate. That's right. This will happen. This does indeed happen. It's an unfortunate reality situation. So let's just see what we can do. So the one thing that's going to happen in the future is that there's going to be a war from Serbia, Romania, and Greece. They're going to join together, and they're going to fight against Bulgaria, and we're going to have the option to join them. Have the crown, of course. Uh, and the thing we have to consider is, do we want to fight? In the stream I did of this, I helped Bulgaria, but I wanted to conquer everybody. So, using my army, I, uh, I helped Bulgaria, but I let the Bulgaria be destroyed. And what ended up happening is they actually invaded us and annexed us. So I'm considering just leaving them alone. Oh, it's been 10 50 years since the crowning of our cult and sultan. It's being celebrated throughout the country. Hooray, political power gain. So, I don't know. Oh, the Pu Ottoman Public Debt Administration. Oh, and Black Monday's fired. Founded in 1881, the OPDA was a European controlled organization that monitored and collected debt owed by the European state to European creditors in the private and public sectors. Most of the debt had been owed to French and British governments as well as private institutions and had, as a consequence, been unilaterally defaulted by the Ottoman government when revolution swept away the regimes in London and Paris. However, the OPDA is still in existence and is now fully controlled by German and Austrian administrations. Administrators mainly concerned with getting the capital loan to Constantinople during the Vedkrieg lose political power with friends such as these. Unfortunate. So yeah, Bulgaria will get rather wrecked by the by the uh, combined forces, or I could help them. Oh, the Fifth Anglo-Afghani War, inevitable, really. So I don't really know what I want to do here because I mean, one thing because my units are really terrible because of the lack of division uh, organization. Ooh, electoral gridlock. This happens sometimes. Basically, no one really knows who's going to rule the commune. It's Benoit Fracon. Fracon for now. So. We could actually help them with like maybe like push our forces to like hold a, hold the river border and push west. That's definitely a possibility. Because another thing that's gonna happen is that Albania is gonna be in a piece of shit and revolt against us. And when yeah, when Albania revolts against us, we're not gonna be able to stop them unless Bulgaria lets us in. Or we could just let Serbia, Romania, and Greece conquer them and then just stand here on the border and wait. Or we could just let it happen normally. There's not really a huge amount of opportunities we get cases bellies. We only get cases bellies against uh, about, uh, Yemen. But, I don't know. We could definitely give it a try. We'll see what happens. Black money has hit the Ottoman Empire. So obviously it's affected us. Oh, the, and Altania and Romania has remilitarized. So obviously they're a little pissed off. Hello, Black Monday. Economic collapse. That's fine. Hooray. So now we could go all the way west, we could go Medicean reforms and get some more political power. Oh my god, our political power already went down because of the Black Monday. You son of a bitch. Ow. Um, getting such a little political power. So we could also go foreign affairs and do things like OPD. Oh no, we need to take any OPDA. I know this is actually good because this would modify it and everyone would hate us a little bit less and we get some factories back. I think I might try and do that. Let's go foreign affairs. Lack of civilian factories. Oh my god. We now have no factories at all. Because of Black Monday. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. It's okay. We'll survive. The first international congress is fired, of course. Everyone's all like socialist. Like, hey, what should we do with the world? I don't know. What do you do? Like, the Easter promises. Okay. Democracy and pressure. Uh, Nikas Iglesh has been elected as the chairman of TUC in Union of Britain. Some French dude. Who is he? Oh no, he's Welsh. He's Welsh. Oh, deploy units. I forgot to assign my units. There we go. We actually have some units. I mean, the problem is, of course, that they're kind of shit. They have a very low amount of division organization. We have no army experience in which to change them. But it's okay. It's okay. We will survive. 
Probably. Ugh. Oh, they're out of that research time malice as well. It's painful. So, I mean, I think once I get to foreign affairs and I'm going to try and modify the OPTA. Oh, my clicks clever Mongolia. Then what I think I'm going to do is I will then move east and go Ottoman army and try and get towards reform gendarm so I don't have to deal with constant revolutions. That'd be nice. I would also get a little bit of um, experience, right? Yeah, 25 experience with 50 experience and 3% recruitable pop. This could mean I could start changing my uh, the way my infantry is organized. Maybe start adding some, like, actually fill the rest of the divisions. That'd be nice. Obviously, I also want to be moving towards tanks when I have more factory power, but I don't have that just yet. Alright, there we go. So let's give us a little bit more political power. And now we'll go OPTA negotiations. With the Ottoman treasury ran dry, they weren't allowed to default. Instead, they decided to collect taxes on our behalf. This has gone on too long. Yes, please. I do apologize if you can hear the loud noises outside my uh, my window. There is a lot of construction going on outside. The Deutsch Mittelfrikas declared war in Portugal, which is the Europe, the puppet of African African puppet, led by Hermann Goering. Oh my god, I didn't realize Hermann Goering was the leader. Wow, he is he looks weirdly pissed off. Hermann Goering. German Emperor, of course, led by Wilhelm II. Sweden led by Gustav the Burnett. Polish, seal, Polish military ceases control. In order to prevent a total collapse of the government, uh, the Czechian passed an emergency measure about the Polish military to create a new government until the economic and political situation stabilizes. They move swift, swiftly on the Wadysla uh, Sikorsky, which is declared national curfew to make a sudden military takeover. The military, the military units now patrol the streets of Warsaw, and many wonder if even after the situation stabilizes, the military intends to stay and create a yet another dictatorship in Eastern Europe. Poland cannot choose for itself, it appears. The military chose for her. That's sad. So now it's led by Wadysla Sikorsky. Wow. I didn't even realize this was one of the choices. Oh, I actually haven't looked at the rest of the Polish tree. Oh my god, Polish tree is awesome. You can go a new Poland. Internal eternal regency removes that. Ah, oh, free elections, women's suffrages. Suffrage. Ah, oh, suffrage. That's nice. International community. Look to Russia, Russian aid, armor designs. Well, isn't that nice? Or... You can also go Beacon of Polish Spirit and Not Yet Lost. Wow. 20,000 manpower. Poland forever. Or you can go A Firm Hand, which is, I think, what they've done. Yep. Eternal Autocrats. Stab in the back. Partial... Ooh, it changes to Partial Mobilization for free. Polish Opportun... Ooh, Polish Opportunism. Justify War Goal Time and War Goal Tension Limit. Polish Militarism. 5% Recruitable Pop. Oh my god, Poland looks amazing. Fortress Poland. Warsaw gains moderate defensive infrastructure. Okay. Polish opportunism. Ruthenian border dispute. Reclaim Vilnius. Polish Galicia. Prussian partition. What? Wow, that's pretty freaking cool. Road to Ukraine. Scuba Ukraine. Crush Germany. How the fuck is, are they going to be able to do this, though? Or victory of the people. And that's socialism. Oh, and there's also crush the monarchists. Wow. That's amazing. Redistribute the wealth. The tree, this tree is really well done. I like it a lot. Wow. And look at all the economic trees they got. This is amazing. The next war's army. Wow. New Age Cavalry, Winged Hussars, Offensive Fighting Force. Import Rifles. This is really cool. The Arab Congress. Planned by Arab nationalists in Egypt, the Arab Congress is an event in Cairo. Delegates from all Arab nations convened to discuss the situation and preservation of Arab culture and identity. Oh, good. Good for us. The National Syndicalists achieve Italian majority. To be expected. Wow. Poland is really cool. So the Arab revolt in the Velkic was a failure, mostly the defeat of the Entente, and the millions of Arabs living in the land of Iraq stayed under Ottoman rule. Despite this, though, Arab nationalism has been on the rise for many years, and has finally culminated in the beginning of the Arab Congress in Cairo. Representatives from numerous Arab nations were greeted by the spectacular performance by Egyptian dancers and artillery salute, and negotiations began. Experts predict that Egypt and Hashemite Arabia will lead the Congress and Congre and a Congress where bitterness towards the Ottomans, and sometimes even discussions of the United Arab Axis against the Turks can flow freely. Oh, dear. There's a lot of good things you can do here, man. Oh, wow. This is pretty impressive. Contemporary assembly. Production efficiency cap. Research slots. A revolution in Siam. Oh, my. Could spread the revolution. Wow. 
Very cool. I think if I was going to do this, though, I'd want to go a firm hand. Increase instability. Yes! We've gone from very low stability to low stability, giving us a lot better things, which gives us a few factories again. My god, we actually have factories now. It's amazing. Incredible. I don't understand how Poland's actually meant to survive, though, because... Holy shit, that's pretty, pretty massive. So, stab in the back. Polish militarism. That's pretty good, though, because you can get partial mobilization. You guys get some really decent strength. The 5% recruitable pop, that's nice. Polish opportunism. Ruthenian border dispute. Get our claims to Badovici. Villainous and Polish Galicia. But they're going to get screwed if they do that, though, aren't they? Yeah, white Ruthenian. Yeah, that, there's a puppet. Of, you'll be a puppet of Germany. You'll die. That's very interesting. All right, so I'm really liking the start of this so far. Uh, we have a lot of puppets, but I think we're going to be okay. The Arab Congress is, of course, a problem, but we'll survive. We're basically just kind of waiting now to continue to build stuff and wait for uh, us to be able to get through these trees. I really want to make sure I go through the gendarmes. So the rightful caliph of all Muslims. Pursuing bilateral relations with merchants, we should improve our legitimacy across the world. All right, OPA, OPA negotiations. Nice. All right, let's start working towards the Ottoman army now. That also should give us a few more factories. Yes, it does. Excellent. Oops. And just a few factories. It helps. Also, we're building the wrong equipment. Oh, my God. That's not good. All right. Just want to keep building troops, guys. We're going to keep building men. Because we can get more population, so it's not, it's not a big deal. We can get quite a lot of population. There is a... Isn't there one that gives us population? Yeah, reorganized army structure. Plan mobilization, so 3%. So... I'm already on 2.5%. So we need an extra half of what I have. An extra quarter, rather. So it's an extra 100,000. So obviously the Pope has died. Now we're going to see what they're going to choose. Which Pope will they choose? Claim the Pontine Marshes. Nobody cares. Italy. Alright. Gonna conquer the world as the Ottomans. I just it's hard because we're very weak. And obviously that um Prince Omer Felix's wife is dead. No, she died after long sickness. That's a shame. The uh the two percent division organization reduction is surprisingly detrimental. It hurts a lot. So, Serbia. These guys actually have normal trees, but it's Romania who has their own tree. Oh, boy. Entrenched party. Claim Transylvania. Oh, I wish, if only they would. Everything for our country. Greater Romania. Where's the one where they actually join the thing? I think it's actually just an it's actually event-driven event for Romania, Serbia, and Greece to join that. Yeah, it's actually event-driven. That's okay. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Tibet's also fighting. Because they are allied with Mongolia. Alright, we've got the Ottoman army, which is great. So now we can start working towards over here. Alright, that'll give us a little bit of experience. And land doctrine research bonus. Woo! Which means we can start to do some land doctrine research. Hooray. So when that one's done, we can go land doctrine. So riots and protests at Rangoon University. Oh my goodness me. Sounds great. Alright. I think this is good. I'm not I'm still not sure what I want to do about Bulgaria, but I think it's gonna be alright. Bulgaria is quite a cool tree as well. The Balkan hegemony, Black Monday weakening, lessons of the Weltkrieg, call to arms. Whoa, five percent pop! Holy shit, Bulgaria. And then you get the fourth Balkan war. Jack Reed's been elected as president of the US. What? He turned into a semi-political operator during his time in Russia and is a dedicated proponent of syndicalism. This stance has made him many enemies to American society, but the association of trade unions that Lee leads remains strong. Whoa. That's an unlikely situation. I've almost never seen that. Look at this, the Fourth Balkan War. That's amazing. And you get 5% recruitable pop, too. And then, and then if you've won victory of the Balkans, you get reinforced rate and more recruitable pop. And you can seize Thres. Oh, shit. They can declare war on me if they win. Oh, my God. The Ottoman Empire is fully independent war more than 80% surrender. 
Wow. And you can dominate Albania, and then you can consolidate victory, and then you can take stuff in Greece. Wow, this is actually a really cool tree. Bulgaria can basically become rule the world. Bulgaria ends up ruling all of this. But I want to unite Islam. That's what we're going to do. We're going to unite Islam. It's Eid al fitr Awesome stuff. We're celebrating the end of Eid, which is great. And then we're going to go reorganize army structure to get the gendarmes. And that'll be the end of the first episode of our new series of the Ottoman Empire. Do be sure to like and comment the video. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your feedback. What other series you would like to see? Uh, what other cool things in Kaiserreich you'd like to see as well? Because it's like the best mod for this game. I love it so much. And if you haven't done this already, I highly recommend you subscribe to me as well. So you can get some of my four videos every day of all the Let's Plays I do. You can also subscribe to me on Patreon. Links are in the description if you'd like to support the channel further. I was Alger Hill and I'll continue to be, and this has been some Hearts of Iron for Kaiserreich. Kicking some ass as the Ottomans. Bye-bye.